Forte Kills, Tag GG, it's uh, What The Moose here and today I've got a Quinn guide for you guys and we're actually going to jump straight into the action with a Predict Flash, jumping in on the Nidalee, Insta Flashing Nami Q, picking up the double kill through the exhaust and that's going to pretty much secure the win for us and it also highlights Quinn's late game damage potential and late game catch potential which is where most people think she falls off, but I personally believe she does scale really well into late game especially in solo queue. It is going to be a bit of a longer video but there's some really nice clips and really nice tips so I do hope you stick around. In this clip we're going to see some of the 1 vs 2 potential. Luckily I saw Lee Sin before he was able to engage on me. Mundo's tanking the whole wave there. Ignites, he does flash, I don't flash. Um, Lee Sin won't be able to pick me up because I've got the min wave for protection and that's an easy 1 vs 2 through a poorly coordinated gank and a bit of luck on my part from the W to get the vision of Lee Sin but due to the high mobility of Quinn if you use it correctly and the blind as well as the fact that you're ranged it is really easy to pick up kills 1 versus 2 which you will see 2 or 3 points through this video so this clip's still playing I'm farming up the wave Lee Sin's gonna back off there and I know that Mundo 100% hasn't warded He's been pushed his tower all game so there's no way a ward can be in the river. Lee Sin possibly could have warded but then he's going to save his ward for a ward jump when he ganks. So I'm about to pick up level 6 just as Mundo comes back into lane and a lot of people will be thinking what am I doing here? What if I randomly ulted there? Am I going mid? No I'm not going mid. I'm going to use my W to check white and this comes through experience, a lot of games played, Lee Sin is on wolves pick up the kill there, I've got two kills, I've got blue buff, I've got a significant CS lead on Mundo and it's going to be really hard for him to come back from this game. I can roam mid to help mid, I can roam bot to help bot, it's going to be so hard for them to win that game and that is why I really love Quinn in solo queue. I've been enjoying them both of my characters, um, both of my accounts sorry, got them both to diamond one pretty much exclusively with Quinn so I've been really enjoying that and I hope you guys will see why. So I'm going to quickly run through a couple of tips and tricks on Quinn. You can actually use your E as a nice escape if you position it correctly over walls. It's pretty obvious but a lot of people would waste it in a situation like that. Nasus has popped Ghost but through positioning myself correctly I can jump over the wall and pretty much easy escape from him. So moving on from that and perhaps the most commonly known tip about Quinn is getting double procs of your passive. I say 90% of players already know about this, it is fairly common knowledge but some people still don't realise it and waste some potential damage. What you want to do is wait until your target is passively marked, use an auto attack then go in for the E, mark them again there, get an auto attack and get a Q. That's one way of doing your combo, you may want to choose to Q earlier if you're against a melee champion who's actually hitting you, harassing you, you can Q in the middle, it's entirely up to you. But in any case, even if you don't get your passive mark on them, you're going to want to auto attack before you go in for an E because of the fact that your E is an auto attack reset. So Kale's getting zoned, get level 6, see my opportunity, go in for the kill. Lee Sin is about, I think he comes in sec but I've got the minion wave for, for protection and I think in the end he just gives up and kicks me so this clip I don't kill Lee Sin but it tends to be if Lee Sin's ganking I just run around the minion wave and, uh, and get a kill so you'll see that later in the video at some point. So the main thing I want to highlight from that is you need to use the minion wave to your advantage when you play Quinn especially against melee champions and especially against champions of skill shots. You really need to abuse the fact that you're a ranged champion and they're not. Um, I'm actually in a pretty vulnerable position right here. Mundo's got a lot of all-in potential because I don't have a wave to back to to juke the cleavers. He realises this and goes for it. So either way, I'm going to have to juke the next Q and I actually think he backed off here. I'm not sure why he backed off here, wasting ticks of his ulti, but I'm still vulnerable. He realises this realizes this and re-engages. I'm kiting around the minion wave so he can't hit the cleavers on me and now his ult is over. I was a bit reluctant to fully commit here because I didn't have it warded. Luckily uh, Wukong's coming up the river, he's going to be pretty stuck for choices. Um, I'm not sure why he doesn't flash over the wall but he's going to take my passive proc there and it's going to be a free kill and a wasted flash. So definitely use the minion wave to your advantage. The next thing I want to talk about is choosing where to position and choosing when to engage on Quinn. 
you've got a lot more catch potential and people are less likely to escape from you than if you're playing Zed. But Zed is a lot more mobile once he's engaged, so you've got to be careful on Quinn. I waited till I see Lucian, Yi's got the Lulu ulti on him, getting the blind on Pantheon and Lucian there, giving Yi the easy triple kill and that's going to be a game ending moment there. But like I said, the important thing to note is, you're so much more vulnerable once you've engaged. It's kind of an all in situation if you don't have a good team to follow up. Normally speaking, you'll go and get a kill then die, which is not ideal in most situations depending on who you kill. So choosing the right time to go in and the right place to position is crucial. Um, roaming is a key factor to playing Quinn. It's pretty obvious. Her ulti is great, uh, really mobile. Sometimes you can fly over wards fast enough that people don't realise you, um, happens quite a lot. But even roaming 3-6 is pretty strong. You've got a lot of 2v2 potential because Quinn is probably one of the better duelists in the game. And I see here Ziggs is pretty low. Um, I'm slightly faster than him, I'm not sure why he stops in a second. But uh, going in for the Q, it does a lot of damage and it's, it's a nice kill. But just being aware at all times, even pre-6. Uh, about the roam potential available on Quinn. What a lot of people don't realise about Quinn is the fact that her abilities in melee form affect her abilities in range form, unlike Nidalee, Jace and Elise. Meaning that if you Q in melee form and ulti, your Q will still be on cooldown, so you have to be careful of that. And getting a bit lucky there, but Quinn has amazing turn potential and amazing burst potential. People really underestimate the damage of Quinn, and that's why I think she's so strong. Uh, I don't know why people say she falls off late game, um, I really think like some of the clips later on will demonstrate what she's capable of by just one-shotting people late game, catching people late game, um, people tend to think they're safe in solo queue, and against most champions they would be, but just overextending that much really late game to get a couple of extra CS, uh, get ulted by Quinn, and 4 versus 5, that's what wins games in solo queue. And I can't tell you how many games I've won in solo queue just from catching someone and turning the game around from a possible loss into an easy victory. Um, so again, in this clip, I get a lucky kill. Aatrox was playing a bit um, a bit on the offensive side when he had uh, not, no real advantage. And this really highlights the, the potential of kiting uh, between minions. Leeson would have missed the queue anyway, but I've got the way for protection. The only way I can die here is if I back off and try and fight outside the minion wave. I'm definitely safe. Leeson came straight from blue, so he doesn't have his uh, E. Uh, he's only got his W, only got his Q, misses a lot, and tanking a double wave there is going to give me an easy kill. And again, like I said before, really make use of the minion wave, and uh, that's going to be played out to your advantage. And I think again in a sec it's going to be deja vu of uh, catching the Lee Sin. It was skipped on a bit so it's not uh, where we were before. But ulting, I was going to check white, check wolves. Um, he wasn't there initially but call it luck, call it uh, perfect intuition. He queues just then and um, picking up a nice, nice kill there to snowball the game even further. So the next thing I want to discuss is Quinn's amazing turn potential once you hit level 6 and this kind of follows on from your 1 vs 2 potential and high mobility during the laning phase. So we see here I'm harassing Yasuo and Mundo is going to come in for a gank. Instantly going to pop ulti and sidestep the cleaver and now Mundo has decided that this gank is over and I think Yasuo also thinks that I backed off but I'm going to hard engage on Yasuo pick up a nice kill there, he's going to miss a lot under the tower, luckily I've got Vibe for protection otherwise I possibly would have died, but Vi escapes, I escape, we pick up a kill and turn a bad situation into a good situation for us. And again here, seeing the lane pressure from Quinn, a lot of damage, Brand isn't going to be able to follow up if I get ganked, I actually didn't see Wukong coming in here, um, I have the whole map vision turned on for this replay. My E was on cooldown, I'm going to have to ulti to escape, and again, I'm on low HP. Brand probably thinks that he's safe to farm the wave. Even though he knows Vile's around, um, he's going to stay in that position, but again, with a hard engage, catching him off guard, getting the auto attack through the buffer before he ulties, uh, pick up the kill with no help from Vi, other than the pressure of zoning off Wukong. So in this clip again, like I was talking about before, 
we were struggling to close out this game despite our huge gold lead. Zig's clear, the lockdown potential of Warwick and Nocturne on our AD carry even no escapes, picking off Ziggs, flushing the thresh hook, our team is pushing bot and this is one of those games where we probably would have lost if we didn't get a catch like that. Grouped 5 versus 5, we were losing a lot of team fights, so um, that's something to note. Here I want to talk about something that's relevant for any champion with a gap closer. If you're chasing someone that has an escape, you cannot use your gap closer until they've used their escape, unless you have a reprocable gap closer like Ari or Diana. So I see here, I've gone in for the queue by walking up to her, as soon as she uses her 90 caliber net, then I E. And we see here, I've got nearly 4k gold in my bag, and that's my burst potential against a fed Caitlyn um, late game with not many items. So again, highlighting the fact of crazy burst potential. And now I want to talk about something called a ghost proc. So we'll see in a second, when my passive fades, I get the auto attack and get some unexpected damage, which helps catch people off guard. So I see that again in slow motion. It's something you can abuse just by waiting for the timer to run out throwing the auto attack just at the last second and then creating the unexpected damage that people don't think they're going to take. So that's something to be aware of when you're playing Quinn. Another nice tip for playing Quinn, especially when you're tower diving people, is when you ulti and you don't want to land in the place where you proc your ulti, if you re-proc the second ulti mid-flight of E, you actually vault backwards. So I'll see that here and it should make more sense. I don't want to land under the tower so I E and mid E I ulti so I jump away from the tower rather than Eing waiting till I got to the destination then ulting and landing in tower range uh, which is not which would not have been ideal and again something to note of Quinn is your E is actually a knockback in both ranged and melee form and you can use knockbacks to cancel thresh lanterns it's only happened two or three times but this is one clip to highlight it we were pretty behind that game, got a nice catch on Oriana and Vayne, he goes to Lantern and there's the E mid flight, Malphite is not going to be able to escape that, Ezreal is going to secure that kill and again we'll get a double proc onto the Thresh and that's an ace in a game where we were behind. But being aware of the fact that E is actually a knockback is huge, uh, not many people think about it when you can cancel fiddle six ulties, you can cancel teleports, uh, you can cancel all kinds of things there. And just being aware, even in ranged form where it doesn't look like it's a knockback, it is a mini knockback. So use that to your advantage. So if I quickly run over the runes and masteries that I use, I actually run full armor pen. So I'm running armor pen quints and armor pen marks for maximum lane pressure. I run magic resist glyphs and I run armor seals. But you can swap out your glyphs and seals depending on who you're laning against. Um, you can run attack speed glyphs or cooldown glyphs or maybe even HP per level seals. But generally speaking, arm pen quints, arm pen marks, armor seals and magic resist glyphs is the, is the best thing. So you probably would have noticed by now as well that I'm playing only mid slash top quinn. I never play bot and honestly I don't mind which. Uh, perhaps I prefer mid because there's more roam potential and it's easier to pick up kills. But top is also a pretty fun lane to play, you get a lot more farms top I, I tend to find and uh, yeah I think it helps to call two roles uh, in a champion you're really comfortable with. It's definitely helped me being able to call mid sash top, it gives your teammates the choice of picking their most comfortable role and it gives you experience playing against champions you wouldn't normally play against and playing in different situations which, uh, which helps you out a lot. So I see there one shotting Wukong gonna kill the jacks with the blind and you can sort of see my six item build there I normally would upgrade the brutalizer into a black cleaver because you can uh, get an insta proc of the five stacks giving you 60% armor pen which is crucial on Quinn uh, I probably would sell the Dorange blade and get a um, Zephyr for more move speed and kite ability late game and uh, the tenacity and then I would normally sell my boots for guardian angel and that would be my six item build gonna quickly jump back to a nice trick you can do on any champion if you're just about to hit level 6 and you're winning a lane hard you don't want them to know hide in the bush get the level 6 through the minions and use the 6 to your advantage if the Malphite had known that I was level 6 he would have backed off 
but because he didn't see me ding level 6 due to the fact I was in the bush, I was able to get a lot of damage onto him, he's probably going to have to back and I can maintain my 20 plus CS lead against a Malphite which most people think is a counter pick for Quinn. So quickly going back to the items, I'll run through the 6 item build fully. Uh, I tend to start with Doran's Blade and then rush a Brutalizer and a Build Order Cutlass. I finish my attack speed boots, get my Blade of the Ring King and then look towards building Last Whisper. Uh, after Last Whisper, I finish Static Shiv, finish my Black Cleaver. If I needed to get my Zephyr earlier, I would have. If not, I get my Zephyr at that point and then I look to get in Guardian Angel. So six item build would be without Guardian Angel, Boots, Zephyr, Black Cleaver, Blade of the Ruin King, Static Shiv and Last Whisper. Some people uh, like to get Infinity Edge on Quinn, but honestly it's overkill. The thing you want to prioritise is movability, kite ability, late game. Sometimes you'll need to carry 1 versus 5 and having the extra move speed, attack speed and damage along with tenacity from the Zephyr, the move speed from your static shiv and proccing your passive helps you be able to kite and kill people late game after you've all in someone with your ulti. You want to be able to burst someone with your ulti and then maintain a good pace in the fight using your E, using your blind and using your high move speed, sometimes nearly 500 in combat to your advantage to be able to carry the game in situations where perhaps you wouldn't if you're slower and have more potential to be caught. So I want to summarise this video by recapping Quinn's strengths and why I've main her on both my accounts this season. Her roam potential is crazy, you have so much map pressure, you can sometimes fly over wards unnoticed if people aren't paying attention. Your damage potential and burst potential at every stage of the game is crazy, allowing you to pick up kills all over the map and allowing you to escape kills relatively easy. You've got incredible catch potential, which is especially useful in solo queue, catching someone off guard who would normally think they're safe and allowing you to win the game or secure Baron inhibitors 4 versus 5 is absolutely huge. You have amazing 1 vs 2 potential pre-6 due to the minion wave, the fact you're ranged and your skill set and you have amazing turn potential late game post-6 due to the fact you have amazing burst, high mobility and people honestly don't expect it. Your lane pressure and your zone pressure is incredibly high allowing you to bully people, build up huge CS leads and start to snowball the game really early. Your late game damage and burst is ridiculous, it's comparable to Zed and it's often unexpected. Your catch potential is safer than Zed's, people are unable to flash away from you but your mobility after is uh, weaker so you need to be careful when you choose to engage. Tips to remember are double procking your passive, using your E to jump over walls but also using your E as a knockback to cancel Thresh Lanterns and channeled abilities using ghost procs during the laning phase, getting level 6 in a bush and using that to your advantage to surprise the enemy, waiting for your target to use their escape before you use your gap closer, being aware of when to enter team fights and being aware of your crazy AoE potential with Q, Static Shiv and your ultimate proc. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you stuck around to the end, thank you so much. Please let me know how you get on with Quinn I have probably 150 games over my two accounts and between a 65 and 70% win ratio so hopefully it can help you as well. I hope you enjoyed the clips and I hope you enjoyed the tips and tricks. Some were obvious, some were not so. Please consider liking the video, favouriting it, telling your friends and sharing if you enjoyed it. It really does help me out a lot. Let me know in the comments if you want to see more videos like this and please subscribe if you like what I'm doing. I'll see you guys next time, peace.